Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at Bexville. So I'm checking in with V5 Middle School team. 938X. This team has been doing absolutely phenomenal. Currently ranked number one in their division as we're filming this. This robot rocking a T3 climber and looking oh so good with it. But a lot of great stuff that goes into this robot. We'll be getting a full overview and everything goes into this. Some great build quality here. So let's learn more about extra hot sauce coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Chris, let's jump right into this robot here. Lots of great stuff to talk about. Talk to me more about the drivetrain that you rock. Okay, so our drivetrain is uh, four inch wheels at 343 RPM, 48 to 84 gear ratio. And so we've gone with a slightly slower robot, so it would be easier to incorporate our PTO as we have here. Uh, our PTO is pretty standard. We have a piston on the back of our robot that when engaged runs a, th a 36 to 36, one to one gear ratio uh, PTO winch. Why did you choose to go with the PTO? Was that for your tier three climber? Yeah. Because for uh, tier three, we needed, we knew that we wanted to run a 66 watt drivetrain, and we needed at least two motors for our intake and uh, it, uh, intake and Lady Brown. So we knew that we would have to incorporate a PTO to be able to do our tier three hang, and also be able to perform in other parts of the game. So our PTO is slower than other teams because our robot is much heavier, and uh, this makes us slightly slower, but also gives us the torque that we need to be able to climb with the mobile goal. Talking about uh, what you're doing for the mobile goal as well too. Can you talk to me more about that mechanism? Okay, so our mobile goal mechanism, uh, we we catted this pretty quickly. So our mounting is a lot different. So a lot of people look at this and think it's a locking clamp, but the thing is, the only reason we have this is because our pistons are mounted towards the middle of our the bottom middle of our drivetrain. Uh, problem? Can you hold it up? They're they're mounted towards the bottom middle of our drivetrain. So we had to have a little bit of a weird mounting for the. So it's other than that, it's a pretty standard two piston mobile goal mech, and we have a bent, bent piece of plastic towards the back, which allows us to to align the mobile goal as as we drive into it, no matter if it's at the point or it's at the, the side. Let's pass over to Alex, and if we don't mind, can we tip with the robot? I noticed that you're rocking odometry pods uh, on your robot as well, too. Talk to me about why having odometry on your robot was so important. All right, so during our auton, it is really important that we know where we are so that we can make the right, uh, so that the robot can turn in the right directions and um, follow the path. So for our odometry wheels, we have these um, very small um, omni wheels, and we also have these rotational sensors that uh, detect the rotation on the omni wheels. To hold all these parts together, we have these uh, laser cut plastic parts, which are very precisely cut so that they're very precise. Uh, yeah, so it allows us to track very consistently. Also, just for redundancy, we have an inertial sensor over here, just in case our, our wheels are a bit off. So that allows us to be more precise. So this makes our Auton very, very effective. Jacob, talk to me about the uh, intake system you're using. I noticed you're rocking a split yeah. intake, so I'd love to hear more about that introduction and then, of course, that second stage you have. Yeah, to. okay. So um, for our intake, we're running a split intake, which is a 5.5-watt motor and a 5.5-watt motor for the first stage over here. So this allows for uh, to double stack our Lady Brown. So if we want to... Um, put two rings onto the wall stake, right? We want to um, have a split intake where we can load up one ring into our Lady Brown and we can keep a second one so we can you know, transfer it, right? And this has been very useful for our matches, right? When going for that um, quick Lady Brown and um, yeah. We also have a, a tongue over here. As you know, in our autonomous, we uh, go for the negative usually because we're running a six plus one where we get the alliance stake and we get for that uh, the middle stack of rings. So uh, this uh, tongue, it basically slides into the stack of rings and gets the third ring, which is our color, and then it goes out and then drops it so that the intake can pick it up. This has been very useful for our autonomous and we. We've been hitting the six plus one negative side autonomous very consistently. Let's keep moving on. Pastor the Prof and talk about the uh, Lady Brown Mac. You mentioned a little bit about that already on yeah. here, but overall it's been very effective for your team. Obviously ranked number one right now. Talk to me more about not of course what not just what you have, but some of the strategy that goes into uh, wall stakes. Yeah, so 
Um, our Lady Brown has been in development for a long time. We've chosen to use half C's on a robot over here, cut from 3x C channels because those are stronger. And instead of, and they're also a lot lighter than using full C channels. And since our bot has a lot of extra mechanisms on it, such as the tier 3 over here, PTO down there, and a lot of extra necessary bracing to make sure it doesn't bend, um, we decided to use the half C's so that our Lady Brown would be lighter, as that's one of the largest parts of the robot and can get really heavy. Um, so from development in your geometry, We've pinpointed the exact location where we want the rotation point of the Lady Brown to be. And then once we did that in the CAD software, we then translated it back over into real life and then tuned that point using L channels over here, as you can see, to get it to be ideal and well within size. So obviously the Lady Brown uh, operates on a simple jamming concept, which we use this foam over here um, and foam over there and two pieces of poly right there. I know they look like hooks and that's a little bit uncommon, but the Lady Brown generally loads to back here and this simulates the height of the wall stake. There you go. Which shows Definitely you. Smooth to get it on. So yeah. Um, generally, we have this bracing across the Lady Brown. Keep it, we, we use the bracing across the Lady Brown to keep it stable and we run one to one ratio. Um, that's important because um, the Lady Brown needs to be able to descore. So 100 um, RPM is a direct red cartridge, reduce its slop uh, based on excessive gearing and is also able to descore and help us climb up on tier three which is another part Kion's gonna talk about when he goes through. Yeah, so let's hear more about that right now. I mean, it's obviously a huge star of what this robot is. So I'd love to hear about uh, how did you get to the process of where you're at right now? And then let's talk a little bit more on how the T3 yeah, actually so coming, works. Coming out of States, uh, looking at our Rose robot design, we saw that a lot of teams are going for the corner climb tier three, where they would make these, these towers here swing backward to climb into the corner. So we saw one big drawback of that is you have to drive inside of the ladder and it's a really big risk and you risk losing the you risk getting defended really easily because all your opponent needs to do is just sit in the middle of the ladder and it's really easy to defend. So we went with this type of tier 3 where it actually extends out of the robot where this this tier 3 has a lot of reach. So the way it works is we, we, we line up where we have this piece pulled back and then when we can just latch immediately onto the ladder coming from the outside. So it's really hard to defend where this can climb from all four sides of the ladder and it, it just makes it for we can guarantee getting onto the ladder and getting the, the climb um, and getting that climb bonus um, much more consistently. Now, in, in the, one of the matches that we saw for you, you did unfortunately take a fall on that, but I will say your robot held up remarkably well. Can you just talk to me a little about that build quality and making sure your robot doesn't fall uh, apart yeah. when you do fall off? So, although we do try to save weight, we try to prioritize like areas with a lot of stress. We try to make sure we're using the like stronger steels, just, like steel screws, where all the braces here are using steel screws and here are using like metal screws, at least where this is aluminum, uh, compared to like lighter weight screws where we're using like nylon on the drivetrain. So, and also additionally, all of our um, robot is like braced pretty well. We have a triangle brace running through here. So all the load gets transferred through like into tension through the bottom of the chassis. So a lot of that load gets distributed evenly on the robot. And that's also helpful because we have Fusion 360 to aid us where Prothom was able to design our entire robot um, in Fusion. So we were able to get um, everything, like we had a really good idea how to build the robot. So we didn't have really any issues with building it. So everything can be really well braced while um, coming into the tournament. Yeah, it's a great software to make sure your robot's uh, yeah, in, yeah. in great shape. Uh, let's pass over to Kayla here. I love that you have the aligner mech uh, going on here. Just talking about the importance of that in terms of climbing out of the T3. Yeah, uh, so this side mech is really important for aligning us with the ladder so that um, we stay straight and that we don't tip like we did um, in, in the match that you saw. Um, and it keeps us, it gives a little more consistency to our three tier, which is obviously a really important part of the three, three tier. Let's start the wrap up. Let's pass over to Calvin. Talk about the Joinker on your robot as well, too. Overall, this whole robot's been right, a great, so. complete strategy. How does the Joinker wrap it up for you on your team? All right, so uh, the Joinker on our robot right now, is, all it does for us is, um, so we use it mainly to push rings out of the corner, like so. Uh, and we also use it to also uh, tip mobile wheels. At the start of the match, we have a lot of PSI, and that allows us to have a really fast down push which grabs onto this little ledge on the Mogo, as you can see right there. And then we drag back so that we get the third goal during Autonomous. So, uh, a lot of other teams have actually tried to implement a clamp into our doink in their doinkers, but we've already been using a lot of pistons on this robot because of the tier three and PTO. So we, we realized that it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to uh, use all of our PSI in a match. We would use it all before we're able to use our doinker. So we just decided to go with a simple standoff me mechanism to pull the goal back. 
Extra Hot Sauce has been a phenomenal machine. Thank you so much for taking time to present it to us. Lots of things that anybody in uh, Vex can learn from. We wish you best of luck as you're currently ranked number one. I know looking for big things in your division and hopefully be honest well to you. So good luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.